William Shatner, best known for playing Captain James Kirk on the television series Star Trek, has vocally, publicly, numerous times shared that he went through an incredibly challenging period of tinnitus ringing in the ears. It's also pronounced tinnitus, and it usually happens after a loud noise exposure, a hearing loss, certain medications, different kinds of life events, head, neck, or jaw injuries, or a few other causes. My name is Dr. Ben Thompson. I am an audiologist and tinnitus expert. In this video, I will describe how William Shatner has explained his journey with ringing in the ears and why it's important for us to understand how this affects someone who has a lot of money and a lot of resources. Let's study how exactly did he get better with tinnitus and what kind of tools did he use along the way. We may have to speculate here and there, but I'm going to help us make sense of this. If you're new here to my YouTube channel, find that red subscribe button. And the 32,000 of you who have already subscribed, I say many thanks to you. As you can see here, William Shatner is quite famous, Star Trek being an amazing television series. And I'm going to start by reading an interview with NPR where William Shatner shared a few things. So Shatner says, right, I have tinnitus. I got it, oh, 10 or 15 years ago. It drove me mad. I thought I was going to lose my mind. The NPR interviewer responds and asks, can I ask you to help us understand what it sounds like, what it feels like? Shatner replies, turn on a television set without the station. A lot of people with tinnitus have different kinds of sounds, but the most common in mine is that hiss static. And that's what it's like. And during the time I was going to the doctor, they attempted to reach the nature of that sound. So they had an instrument that played all kinds of hissing. They tweaked the machine until they reached mine. And when they reached the same timbre and tone of my sound, I broke into tears. Somebody had hacked their way through this jungle of sound where I was totally alone in my agony and somebody had reached me and it just moved me to tears. Shatner, still describing his experiences with tinnitus, explained, a lot of people have it, a lot of returning veterans have it. It's caused by a number of things, age being one of them, medication, and mostly traumatic sound. A lot of sound engineers have it. The cilia in your inner ear dies, some of it dies, and this code of silence that you had when you were born is broken. And so it's the brain's activity. If one person listening to this can be helped by my saying, don't despair. I promise you, eventually you won't hear it. It won't go away but you won't hear it. We're also going to talk about the American Tinnitus Association and his statement to the tinnitus group here in the United States. But before I do, I wanted to comment based on my audiology knowledge about some of the some of the facts he's sharing. First, there are different kinds of tinnitus and the symptom can present in different sounds. One of them being hissing, the most common being ringing. Sometimes you can hear buzzing or pulsating. But William Shatner here is reporting a hissing kind of static tinnitus. And I imagine he hears it in both ears. And I imagine it's louder in one ear given that his was due to a loud noise exposure. That's a common type of tinnitus. And tinnitus retraining therapy is most likely the treatment path that he pursued. When you're talking to the American Tinnitus Association, especially at the time of him reaching out to them and them doing that relationship, Tinnitus retraining therapy was the best and only solution for tinnitus. Still today, it's one of the best. We also have cognitive behavioral therapy. We also have mindfulness. Our telehealth doctors at Treble Health focus on all of it. That's going to help people the most. But anyways, back to William Shatner. He mentions that a lot of military veterans have it. He mentions that the cilia in your inner ear can die and that code of silence can really change. So that is true. And most kinds of tinnitus are related to the inner ear malfunctioning. However, someone can have a hearing test in the normal range and have tinnitus, still have bothersome tinnitus. It's not always the cilia in the inner ear. It's not always the inner ear as the cause of tinnitus. However, often it is. So that's factually accurate where William Shatner described that. And earlier he mentioned that he went to the audiologist, the doctor, and they tweaked the sound in the machine until they reached a tinnitus that was very, until they reached a sound that was very close to his tinnitus. So this is something that's most likely called pitch matching. And at an audiology clinic, the audiologist can put you in a booth, a very quiet booth with pieces in your ears and play different sounds, different sound types, and then measure how close those sounds are to your tinnitus. You subjectively say that's loud louder or softer than my tinnitus, and that's the correct pitch of my tinnitus, or that's too high, that's too low. Through that process, 
It doesn't affect the treatment. For example, if we're programming devices on the ears for tinnitus, like tinnitus maskers that are used in tinnitus retraining therapy, it does not require us to pitch match, meaning get the exact tone of the tinnitus. And it doesn't require matching the exact hissing of the tinnitus either. If you have hissing tinnitus, I think if anything, this was just a novel thing to do. And we know as audiologists that anytime we do that, it makes the patient really understand that we know what they're going through because previously no doctor has been able to get so specific as to match the sound or even replicate something close to the sound of what you might be hearing in your head or in your ears. Let's now move on to William Shatner's statement for the American Tinnitus Association. Regardless of the characters I portray on TV and on the big screen, my tinnitus once buried me in a negative place where many of you are now or have been. Believe me when I say I've been there. My tinnitus began when I was filming the Star Trek episode Arena. I was standing too close to a special effects explosion and it resulted in tinnitus. There were days when I didn't know how I, was, I would survive the agony. I was so tormented by the screeching in my head, I really thought I would not be able to go on. But then a ray of light burst into my life, the American Tinnitus Association. The help they gave me literally saved my life. The harsh reality of tinnitus has robbed silence from the lives of nearly 50 million Americans. Whether you hear it in your ears or in your head, tinnitus means the same thing. Noise that does not go away. You do not suffer alone. So a few things here. In this message, which is a YouTube clip, of William Shatner promoting the American Tinnitus Association. He mentions that he developed the tinnitus after a loud explosion, special effects explosion on the set at Star Trek. So I wonder if he you know, got compensation for that. I wonder if he you know, did anything about that because obviously that was a significant detriment to his health. And it's something that was not his fault and it happened on the workplace. So I wonder if he got workers' compensation for his medical expenses. For example, that's something that I would consider and that's something I'm curious about. Him reaching out to the American Tonight's Association, getting treatment, and as we learned previously, eventually he habituated to the degree where he doesn't hear it anymore. He said that earlier. He said, don't despair. I promise you, eventually you won't hear it. It won't go away, but you won't hear it. Now, he got treatment. He got therapy for his tinnitus. Again, likely following tinnitus retraining therapy, which can take six to 18 months to completely habituate to the sound of tinnitus. So what does that mean? That means that for someone who has all the resources, for someone who has a lot of money and can go to any doctor, anyone who can really solve this for him, he likely went to an expert audiologist who focused on tinnitus retraining therapy. And that worked for him because as he said, he doesn't hear it anymore. It's not going away, but he doesn't hear it. Only when he really focuses on the sound or he's in a very quiet place and he tries to listen for it, does he hear it. That's a great degree of habituation. That's something that our patients get to when we work with them. And when someone reaches that point, we celebrate it. They don't need to continue with sound therapy at that point, for example. They don't need to continue with any treatment or any therapies. They've reached the goal. And at that point, it's about maintenance. So now he's very careful around loud noises. He doesn't want to go through that again. And you should be too. If you're going through this habituation journey with tinnitus, no matter how far in you are, no matter how many weeks, months, or years, there's still gains that can be had. And protecting your hearing is an important piece of this. Another comment William Shatner says is, the harsh reality of tinnitus has robbed silence from the lives of nearly 50 million Americans. Now, that may be the prevalence of tinnitus, but the phrase robbed silence is a bit aggressive and it, that has the sentiment of someone who experiences very bothersome, intense tinnitus. Now, most of you know if you have tinnitus, if you've spoken to family, friends, neighbors, etc., and you tell them, oh, I hear a ringing in my ear, they might very nonchalantly respond and say, oh yeah, I hear that too. And you look at them thinking, what? You actually hear this in your head? They say, oh yeah, hear when I go to sleep, hear it whenever I'm in quiet. Yeah, yeah, it's there. And then you're probably thinking, well, you can't be hearing the same loudness or the same volume as mine because there's no way you would be so chill about it. There's no way you'd be so relaxed about it. And I think that's the correct perspective here. Not all tinnitus is created equal and it is such a subjective symptom. You are not able to compare your tinnitus to mine. I'm not able to compare mine to one of our other treble health audiologists who has tinnitus. It's a subjective thing. The tinnitus functional index is as close to an objective test of tinnitus. Anyone who's in our programs, we measure the TFI. It's called the tinnitus functional index. And what it does is give us a number 
that is the equivalent to how bothered you are by your tinnitus. Over time, over a treatment period, we reduce that number significantly to the point that brings you into normal or mild levels of being bothered by tinnitus. That's a successful outcome. So even though we can't measure the loudness that's how we improve it. So for William Shatner to say that tinnitus has robbed silence from the lives of nearly 15 Americans, I'm one of the 15 million Americans who experience tinnitus in silence, but I don't feel robbed of silence, meaning that I can be in silent places. I can read a book. I can go to sleep without a fan if I wanted to. I can be in a library. I can be in a quiet indoor place. I can meditate despite having tinnitus. So I don't feel robbed by it. If you do feel robbed by it, you know, leave a comment here. I want to give you a voice as well. And sometimes the tinnitus is so significant that I understand that sentiment that it does feel like you've been robbed. What the ATA, American Tinnitus Association, benefited from here is, is a well-known celebrity, Star Trek, so popular, validating their nonprofit and creating a community around the shared intention of finding better therapies, treatments, and research for a cure for this condition. And let's make it clear, we're all on the same team there. If we find a new treatment, solution, therapy for tinnitus, we 100% will keep the community updated. It's the job of scientists, doctors, the people doing the good work in our community to only promote quality products and give a chance to experimental products. But once they are determined they're either not working or they're working, we need to change the language on them. And we don't tolerate snake oil devices. We don't tolerate herbal supplements that claim to cure tinnitus. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's incredibly sad and predatory for companies to sell devices that claim to cure or significantly reduce tinnitus when in fact it's essentially a placebo. That's tough to say. That happens a lot if you've spent money on devices, herbal supplements, pills that you thought would really help your tinnitus but did nothing or you're not sure. Let us know in the comments below. Let's start that conversation because this is where the community can come together and help each other out, right? You have your own experiences. I have my own experiences with many, many patients, many stories. We have a team of doctors who've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of telehealth appointments every month, hearing boots on the ground, what's the newest update and everything. And you have your own experience as well. So all that to say, we just learned how William Shatner has shared about his tinnitus journey perhaps one of the most famous celebrities with tinnitus. How did he get it? From hearing the loud explosion on the television set during Star Trek, how is he doing today? Likely habituated because most people who habituate, a vast majority, are fine for the rest of their lives. How can this story be applied to everyday patients? Follow a dedicated, comprehensive treatment and therapy plan for tinnitus. Reach out to an expert. If you don't know anyone, Find our team, treblehealth.com. We'll be glad to help you. You can apply sound therapy. You can apply cognitive behavioral tools and techniques. You can apply mindfulness. And when you do all of that together with proper guidance, proper goals, you will get better. Don't doubt it. Push through that doubt. Push through that uncertainty. Find the therapies that work for you. That's what our mission is. That's what we excel at. Happy to make this video. Happy to share the story of William Shatner. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel here. And I'll talk to you on the next video. Dr. Ben, signing off. Thank you for watching today's video with Treble Health. Check out our next video by clicking the button on this screen or another recommended video. And if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much. See you on the next video.